call the meeting to order at 602. We have a fairly decent amount of attendance, so we'll just make sure that give Teresa a minute to write down anybody's names that may be on. Okay. And if you haven't, any for anybody that's in person, if you haven't done so already, just make sure either now or before you leave, just put your name on the sign-in sheet. So we have that for minutes. Just a sound check, just so to make sure you can hear me. Loud and clear, Gene. Mm -mm. That was better than in the beginning, much better for me. I have a little hearing loss. Yeah, there was too many people talking, I think, Norman. So I had a hard time hearing you too. When right, so, first, so first on the, the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any amendments to the agenda this evening? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Just need a motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. And then one thing I just wanted to bring up, because we will have um, a couple of topics that are going to come up later on, is we'll just kind of use the process of um, when we get feedback from the audience, kind of like our, our public comment, you know, we'll do um, three to five minutes per person. Make sure everybody has a chance to talk and then we can go to seconds if necessary. Does that sound fine with the board? <clears throat> okay. All right. And then for anybody that's on the Zoom, just uh, if you do have something um, at any point, just use the um, raise your hand icon and, and Teresa and I will get to you. Um, at the most appropriate time for that. So we'll try not to forget anybody. We usually don't, but. Let's try and figure out that. All right. So uh, first on the agenda, we have appointment at 6.05. So I'm assuming you're substituting in this evening because I have different names <laughs> on the agenda item, so. Yes. I don't see Bob, but I see Al. I had written Bob, but I assume that's Norman, Cohen, and Yes. Oh, we're gone. So I, I was yeah, you're absolutely right. Bob is uh, enjoying, if you can hear me, Bob's enjoying a vacation out in Vancouver, uh, taking a train back. So he's on a slow ride back to Vermont. So Norm and I decided we could uh, adequately substitute for Bob. So I'm Al, that's, that's Norman. I'm sure you can. Well, good for him. I'm glad he's enjoying some time off. So I was just gonna kind of introduce the declaration and then turn it over to those two, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. fine. You can hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, so thank you all. Um, we're super excited to um, present the Declaration of Inclusion to the select board today. It's something that we've been talking about in the Equity and Inclusion Committee for probably the better part of six months. Um, and before we do this, I just wanted to really sincerely thank you all for your leadership around equity and inclusion. It's been really exciting to be a part of this committee and to be a part of um, supporting the town in efforts towards um, equity. And there's some really key parts, I think, that are the successes that we've had and that you all have led, like this right here, having a Zoom um, hybrid meeting that creates more accessibility for people to be able to attend. Um, I know we've got some folks on this meeting who are in other towns and some folks who are parents and, um, you know, it's just, this is, this is the work right here. Um, the new website policies, the conversations that we've had around um, racial justice and colorblindness, um, the work that Lindley and Christy are starting to do with the statewide um, Ideal Vermont Initiative. I mean, these are all just examples of your leadership, and so um, we're really grateful for that. Um, and hopefully this is just another piece of that movement together. Um, so the Declaration of Inclusion um, is a statement that almost half of the towns in the state have adopted at this point. Um, and the statement um, reads that the town of Bethel condemns racism and welcomes all persons regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity or expression, age, income, or disability, and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community. As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure that all of our actions, 
policies and operating procedures reflect this commitment. The town has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. So tonight, the EIC um, is introducing the declaration um, and asking that the town adopt this declaration. I will say that we, um, having uh, Jean having attended one of our meetings, we did include um, income um, as a part of the sort of general categories of um, folks that we really want to name as being protected in our community. Um, and uh, we also um, we also proposed this or, or brought this to the planning commission because we wanted to get a sense of what the planning commission thought about how this language complements um, where we're going as far as our town plan. And so I also included the notes from that May um, planning commission meeting where. Um, Unanimously, um, the Planning Commission said it supported this language and would be excited to include this in the next town plan. So I thought that was really exciting to have their support. And so I'd love to introduce two fabulous people, um, Norm Cohen and Al Wakefield, who have really been leading this effort around the state um, and who first proposed the declaration to us. And so take it away, guys. Well, thanks. I'll go first. I'm Al Wakefield, and uh, that's uh, that's Norm Cohen, who will speak just uh, just shortly. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've got a cold. I'm just getting over COVID, so pardon me if I if I do whatever I do in your ear. Uh, I, I, it's not intentional. Um, Bob Harnish is really the uh, uh, the progenitor, if you will, of of this decoration. Bob and I know each other for a long time. I've lived in Vermont uh, for now over 40 years or so, former corporate executive, and then uh, owned a food service uh, business in Rutland, and then went back into something I knew something about, which was execu international executive search, very senior level uh, headhunting for a bunch of major corporations around the world. In any event, uh, Bob, uh, Bob came to me now about two years ago and said, uh, the death of Breonna Taylor uh, and what happened to George Floyd bothers me. And I've been a business guy for all these numbers of years, developing my own business and not pay very much attention to the social and economic uh, and uh, justice uh, 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 element in this country. And he said, now I am. And I really want to do something uh, about I want to be involved in change. I want to do something that's important. That's important. Um, Simultaneously, his cousin, who's on the board of uh, Franklin, the town of Franklin, brought to him the Declaration of Inclusion. And uh, Bob did some readings. We did some talkings. And Bob came back and said, here's something that I think would be important to Vermont and that I'd like to work on. And would you like to work on it with me? Bob and I put together some plans. Uh, and over the last now year and a half, almost two years or so, uh, along with Norman Cohen, who subsequently joined us, uh, we've got some 67 towns that have, have adopted one version of the Declaration of Inclusion, which uh, uh, Owen just uh, just read to you. For the most part, uh, towns, uh, probably 80 percent of the towns have adopted the declaration just as uh, as we put it together. It's not a perfect declaration. Everybody has something they want to add to it. And, and that's OK, as long as it uh, embodies the spirit, intent, I think, and the meaning of the original Declaration of Inclusion. The other 20 percent have added things which, from our perspective, really Im improve the declaration. And from our perspective, what it says is the towns are committed. Uh, to what they are, 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 are agreeing to, really committed and going to do something about that. And so uh, uh, we've been very, very pleased that towns have, have gone about adopting, changing it as they see fit. Um, uh, and, and we're moving towards 100, uh, hopefully in the next, uh, next eight, nine months or so. Norman, uh, as I said, got involved a couple of months after we started, and Norman has his own reasons for, for being involved, and maybe Norman can tell you why and, and tell you why it's important, I think, to Vermont uh, to, to, to sign on to a Declaration of Inclusion. Norm? Thank you, Al, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak. Um, I've been here 50 years. I came in 19, over 50 years, 1969, to join the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh, I'm a retired attorney now, thankfully, after 50 plus years in private practice uh, here in Rutland. And um, uh, I'm just 
thrilled to be a part of this. Uh, Al and I have been friends for years. We bonded over things like politics and jazz and bumped into him one day. He said this was what he was doing. And without a moment's hesitation, I just said, I'd like to help if I can. Um, it, it just seems right. And it seems right for Vermont at this time. Uh, we need to grow. We need to draw people. And we need to lose our reputation as the whitest state in the country. Um, and um, I just wanted just to correct one thing that was said earlier. 50% uh, of the towns have not adopted, 67, as Al said. But we're uh, closing in on 50% of the population. I think that's where the confusion might have come in. We're now actually at 47.9, and um, we're really proud of that. Uh, and there, it's just spreading sometimes on its own. Um, Bob brought it uh, from his cousin in Franklin to the Pittsburgh Select Board. They adopted it, and the next thing we knew, without anybody approaching, uh, Brandon adopted it. And then we never spoke to Middlebury, and they adopted it. So. And that's happened here and there. Um, and um, I just think it would be the be helpful uh, the, for every town to adopt it. It would be helpful to, for Bethel to adopt it. I cannot tell you how many times in the 50 years that I have driven through Bethel, either on the way to Montpelier or some other town, Randolph or um, Northfield or just <laughs> and I've had a couple people who work for me uh, practice law there and I've of course been involved with various of the attorneys um, it's a wonderful community from everybody who I've known that live there and um, I think you would you know, add to your attraction by adopting this and I hope you do thank you very much and if you have any questions I'm sure we can we'll try to answer them well, I think, uh, I think Norman, yeah, you mentioned, uh, I think, Pittsfield, Pittsford, Brandon, Rochester, Randolph, I'm talking off the top of my head, but those have, uh, and, and what, um, uh, um, a couple of others in, in the net, Woodstock, I think, comes to mind, have adopted, uh, along with Rutland, Rutland Town, et cetera. So towns around you uh, have adopted, as I said, with one variation uh, or or another. Uh, the rationale for the whole decoration is in our brochure. It talks to the fact that Vermont's population is getting older, uh, that younger people are leaving. Uh, some are coming back, but not enough. As you ride around Vermont, and I've been to Bethel as well, and you see uh, uh, signs out saying employees needed, whether it's food service or, or whether it's super within the schools or whether it's garages or, or whatever it is. Uh, we don't have people to fill jobs here. Importantly, we don't have the number of new businesses coming here, which are necessary to help this, uh, this, this state grow. And Bethel is going to be in competition with all those towns around it, you, that have adopted already, not to mention being a part of, of Vermont. You know, our vision is to, uh, is to make Vermont uh, uh, the number one state for inclusion for welcoming, uh, uh, providing safety and security for all people, A-L-L in capital letters uh, in the country. And I think we're well on our way. Uh, I don't know of any other state that's moved uh, as far as we have on this, but to make it real, not only in terms of doing the adoption, but in terms of setting forth uh, policies, procedures, uh, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we welcome people, uh, the way we appear to be concerned about people in every aspect uh, that separates us from other states. That's why I'm here. I came here invited by two uh, two Vermont business people, uh, one who owned Killington at the time, who started Killington, in fact, another who owned uh, a major uh, uh, real estate operation in Rutland, now in Middlebury, and a third person who owned a major retail spot uh, in Killington. And that's why I came and I've been uh, been very, very happy. And I think we brought some uh, brought some income to Vermont in our uh, in our 40 plus years here. So uh, I turn it back over to you, Owen. And as Norm said, we're available to answer any questions. Thank you guys so much for your leadership. Um, and yeah, so this is our proposal. We'd love to see Bethel adopt the Declaration of Inclusion so that people know that our town is welcoming and it's sort of an uh, 
an opportunity for us to bring new business, new people to the town, but also, um, you know, to make that statement that we are with the trend of Vermont, the trend of our country, that we want to make sure this is a place that's safe for everyone, regardless of their identity. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions for us, we'd love to answer them. In the minutes, um, we were lucky, I also on the planning commission, so the planning commission, um, so we were lucky enough to meet Al, wait to meet Al and um, Bob before, and the minutes are in here. And, and Bob had said, you know, kind of what Al had said, that he feels that since the population of Vermont is aging, he thinks this declaration is a great way to show that, that Vermont is welcoming. And, you know, like Al said, a good tool to, to get people, maybe young people to either stay or to come back. And, um, but it was um, a great conversation that we had at the Planning Commission. And certainly the Planning Commission had said they would, you know, put the wording in for the town plan. And of course it has to go through the cycle of uh, public comment. But, but anyways, we were lucky enough to meet them earlier too and, and uh, they were lovely and I liked that idea that you know to just that Vermont was welcoming so it was a, it was a nice idea. Dave? Well I got a question so if we adopt this and, and it's signed what, what will you do with it so that people will know it's there? I mean until I saw my packet I didn't know anything about the other, other towns adopting this uh, I know that being on the board that I, we've talked about this, but uh, you ask someone else in the town, they have no idea. So by sign, I guess my concern is nothing wrong with this, but if you're going to have this, do something with it. And, and I don't know what, but. That may be a question for Al. Yeah. Well, be. Is Sorry, be, be, and your voices are coming through uh, uh, a little bit faint, so pardon me if I interrupt, but uh, no, we appreciate that question. It is the right question, in fact. Um, a lot of what we suggest you do is outlined in the VT Declaration of Inclusion.org on our website. And it's kind of a one pager which talks about what you can do right now, talks about what you can do in six months and what the follow on can that 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 can be over the over subsequent years. Uh, immediately, certainly, and Putney did this was to put it on its website uh, to put the decoration uh, as a lead in and several towns have done that directly on the first page of, of, of their of their website. Uh, number one. Uh, number two, if the Putney as well uh, put some signs out the front says uh, Putney welcomes you, blah, 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 blah. Uh, number three uh, is to perhaps uh, outline something if you have a newsletter or, or something that goes out on a regular basis, quarterly basis, or whatever, to town uh, to put it uh, there. And as we've said to the governor, uh, who signed the Declaration of Inclusion Proclamation for the state now two years ago, uh, designating the second week in, uh, in May as Inclusion Week in Vermont. Because I think inclusion is, is so important to Vermont's economic viability, I think that every time I open my mouth, I'd find one way of talking about that. Because he talks about needing people, he talks about jobs, he talks about welcoming companies, he offers incentives for people to come to Vermont, and the lead in has got to be, we welcome people. We want you to come here. We want you to bring your talent and your skills, bring your families and come here uh, and, 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 and work towards achieving whatever your, your life's uh, uh, personal and financial goals are. So those are, those are a couple of things you can do right away. In addition to that, and then I will, I will shut up, uh, the state of Vermont, uh, through the uh, uh, Department of, of uh, Racial Justice, I think it's called, Susanna Davis heads it up, uh, has developed a listing of things that towns can do. And that leads into what the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has suggested. They have a toolkit that you can look at and begin to do things uh, almost immediately. Most of these things cost absolutely nothing to do. And so it's low hanging fruit. It just makes such good sense from a moral standpoint, but certainly from an economic standpoint, which almost everybody has some level of interest in. Does that, does that help? I think so. Okay. What? Yeah, no. yeah. I, I just, I just like to add that, um, the um, what Al said is very true. Uh, a couple other 
little things we've thought about is if you adopt a declaration to frame it and put it in the town clerk's office. A number of towns have done that. It doesn't cost anything, and it's right out front for people to see when they come in. Um, I'd also like to mention and uh, encourage you uh, to visit our webpage. Um, the, um, and I'll mention something also I think is important. Uh, most of what we say, at least in, has been um, carefully, and certainly the declaration itself, carefully vetted with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and their council. Um, so it was, they thought it was comfortable for the towns. And, and when I say vetted, I mean with a microscope. <laughs> uh, it took an hour and a half sometimes to, uh, to get through what we did with them, but was very satisfying and, and very helpful. And it's just moving forward. How do you put um, these principles into action? You know, you take a look at some of your procedures, you take a look at some of your practices. Uh, if there are things in there that are no longer appropriate, you review them and possibly edit them out. If things are absent that may help the cause along, you insert them. Um, and um, it won't happen overnight. This is not something that's one and done, either with adoption or with what we call implementation. Um, and it's an ongoing process. Uh, you know, some of the towns who adopt it may have think of things you don't think of and vice versa. And it goes back and forth. And we've seen a little of that so far. So it's, you know, it's just another tool to improve life for your citizens and to hopefully attract more. Thank you. We have any further questions or comments by the board or? Not oh, I was just curious what type of modification some of the other towns are have been doing. For the most part, towns have added to the if you look at the the Brattleboro. Um, well, let's see. Let's look at the Burlington uh, decoration. If you look at that um, and we can send that to you, certainly uh, uh, it's it, what they've done is to add some implementation things. They've not just said we adopt, but here's what we're going to do about it. Middlebury uh, was the first to kind of do that as well. Here's what, here's how we intend to, uh, to, to implement um, what some of the towns have, have done in modifying the language is to add uh, uh, sexual uh, orientation uh, in one instance, in, in another instance, a town uh, mentioned socioeconomic status, which I think is what I heard Owen getting into, uh, into earlier. Uh, there have been some other suggestions which were um, not intended to, I think, help the cause along, like adding flatlanders. <laughs> I thought you'd get a laugh out of that, but not <laughs> in, any of it, in any of it. We thought that was not helpful. Uh, but the, the, those, the, the, the social, the um, socioeconomic status one, I think has some merit to it. In fact, uh, Brattleboro just amended uh, in going forward their decoration to include that. So not a lot of modifications to the to the to the marginalized, if you will, groups. More towards his what we intend to do about adopting. I well, I, I can't. You know, I, before uh, we have to give credit to Owen and Jesse. Um, before they purchased Babes and started to affect the change in the town of Bethel, we we're in a totally different frame of mind, and they have been solely, not solely, but pretty much solely responsible for the changes that we've seen in regarding equity and inclusion here in the town of Bethel. And I know it's a, a serious topic. Uh, I'm on the Two Rivers, I'm a Two Rivers Commissioner for the town of Bethel. And Wednesday night, our meeting is completely, uh, totally dedicated to equity and inclusion. We've got speakers coming in. Um, so it's a very important development issue for the state not only equity and inclusion, it's bringing in new people and, and all of that intends too. Yeah. 
So just so that we can stay on target with our meeting agenda, um, unless I hear anything else, do I hear a motion to accept the declaration of inclusion as written? Second. Second. Okay. I think Paul beat you to it, Gene. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Al and Norman, for coming. I know you have another select board meeting, I believe, tonight that you have to attend. We're flying up to Guilford. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that trip. And thank you thank for being you. here. Well, thank you. I, I know the work, the hard work that your committee, the committee has, has put in, and I, I commend them. Every time we do this, uh, there's something that's rewarding that comes out of it. But but importantly, there's something that we learn and we learn how how towns go about about their business. And I must say, your committee has been uh, been first class in every way that it's logically, I think, and strategically gone about bringing this to you. So thank you. It's, it's a it was a pleasure working with uh, with your group and 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 thank you for uh, for moving ahead on this. I think it's very very important to uh, to Vermont. Yeah, I can't add anything uh, to what Al said. It's been a real. I've read every word and I'm so impressed and so pleased. And you are now the 68th town. And thank you. And one other thing, if we can help, if you need to talk to us, feel free, whether it's privately, you, our numbers are listed on the website, uh, or you want to do it publicly, uh, this is not for us one and done. Uh, this, we're in for the long haul. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Good night. Take All care. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we'll open it up for public comment right now. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda that anybody would like to uh, bring up, now's the time to do that. <laughs> I see Ellie's uh, hand up first. You're on mute, Ellie. Okay, I'm on board. Um, I just... I just want to say that um, the Rec Committee is so excited that we had, and, and thanks for the support, that we had such a successful 5K race um, on Saturday. It went really well. We had even people from Reading, Vermont um, join us and, and kids, and, and people uh, ran with their dogs, and, and we had a very successful 5K, and, and we look forward to doing it again. And I want to say excitedly that Trail Fest on Sunday was a great, uh, it was well organized and a, and a great event. And, um, and um, most of you probably missed the highlight of the Trail Fest being that I have not been on a bicycle since I was 25. And I, you missed the opportunity to see me ride an e-bike. I rode an e bike and you Did missed. Did you like it? Oh, it was really neat. It was really neat. So, so I want to um, just commend the people that organized the Trail Fest. It was very um, um, greatly organized and really well done. And, um, and so um, we at Recreation Committee was a part of both of those things and, and are excited that they were such successes. Thank you. Thanks, Ellie. Anybody else public comment? Don't see any online. Anybody in person? If not. We will move ahead with our agenda. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is a discussion regarding uh, reclassification. Point uh, four six miles of Class Three Gilead Road, currently noted that by VTrans is not up to standard. Um, and the talk is to move that to a trail destination a classification. Right, so, so Brian was right, it's a class three, and this is not up to standard, it's that small piece past Andrew Wright's. Um, and then of course, and there's Brian's uh, has a right away, and then is it Rogers who owns, isn't it Rogers? Somebody owns like an acre right there. And then it goes to Rochester and there's, um, 
Mr. Sedwick. Thank you. I'm brain cramp. And um, so, anyways, uh, obviously, the select board has choices, right? They could downgrade it, or I say downgrade, reclassify is the proper term from a to a class four or to a trail. Um, so the idea at this point is to reclassify that portion to a trail. It is a trail on the Rochester side. Um, and then what would happen is when it is, if the select board went through that, and, and of course there's a hearing process, it's all outlined in statute and they have to call a hearing to order and then they would go to the property to look at it and then they would come back and it's a quasi judicial hearing and people can give testimony and it all laid out in statute. There'd be 30 day notices that have to be sent to all the abutters plus any mortgage holders, utility holders, and it's a process. But um, if the select board chose to, after the hearing and all that, to reclassify as a trail, then anyone who has legal right of access that basically divert, you know, diverts back to them. So Brian would be able to have access to his property. He could maintain it. Mr. Sedgwick, um, you know, Derek, the Ro or, uh, sorry, Andrew, the Rogers. Um, so it's no longer considered quote unquote a town highway. Um, and the individuals that use it have the right to, to maintain it or to do with it. You know, the town could pass a trail policy, but I think that you're the rights of the landowner would probably end up superseding that of the of the town. So so obviously the select board has two options to either reclassify it as a trail <coughs> or class four road. So and if the select board is going to reclassify the section that's not up to standard um to a trail, then the town does not have to upgrade or maintain it. If we're going to, if they're going to reclassify it from the not up to standard class three to a trail, the town does not have to do anything to it because they're going to reclassify it to a trail. That's the statute. Um, so that's one thing is the select board, you know, will have to that's obviously the recommendation myself and the attorney is to downgrade it to a trail but that's your decision because you have to make a choice of either downgrading it to a trail or class four road because when we issue the notices for the hearing it can't be either or it has to be clear on what your intent is um the other question brian you had wanted to know was the history of the state highway aid on the 0.46 miles. So I did talk to Jonathan Croft and ask him. And 1980 was the last time we received aid and he sent me this chart. And so basically using 1975 to 1980, it was only went to 75. Um, the town averaged $193.84 per year over those six years. So, you know, it, obviously it would have gone you know, down a little before that, but I don't, he only gave me a chart in 1970. Uh, but I told you I would, so I did. So that's why I put these as two separate items. So that is the recommendation: is to move, is to reclassify it from um, this not up to standard class three, which is basically already kind of class four, to a trail. And the only people that have access currently are Brian, um, you know, Andrew. Bev, you know, the right, right family, um, the Rogers and Mr. Sedgwick, I believe, but I can't say for sure because the attorney hasn't done a, a one owner title search yet. There, I could, I went to Rochester, but I only, you know, I could be missing maybe somebody also next to Sedgwick that I'm not aware of currently that has at stake. So that's <clears throat> the recommendation. Okay. Any discussion by the board? No, I spoke with somebody this evening who went through this in the town of Stockbridge a few years ago. And after the town spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to establish it as a class four road and him losing his access, they ended up declaring this particular section a trail. So, and the, and the primary benefit was he retained his access. 
and it was a wooded trail. It really was not anything that resembled a road as we know it. Yeah. Um, but it worked out, you know, he, he was able to keep it, but, the, but there was a tremendous expense on the part of the town defending it. Gene? Yeah. Yeah, I no. just wanted, I wanted to clarify, does this still retain public access? as a trail? Yes. Yep, it does. It, it still remains a public right of way. But thank you. No thank one's, you. But no one's going anywhere because <laughs> it, it ends up on Mr. Sedgwick's property and, and they have declared a trail. I don't think you can access. Could you buy four wheeler, Brian, past Mr. Sedgwick's? <laughs> they do. Okay. So yes, it remains a public right of way. So, but the um the ownership base or but the maintenance of it or the say the rights to it go back to the owners of the, that currently have access Brian? i'm going to suggest i can see class four but definitely not trail um number one it's you guys policy not to downgrade anything from class four and it's kind of a statewide with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and with, uh, I think, Vermont Better Back rules to not downgrade anything any further than Class 4 to keep it open for the public. The town, also the town doesn't have any um, legal trail policy written up. No, we don't. So, well, so we have nothing to go by. We can write um, one. I mean, we have lots of policies that we still probably need to write about. But the town doesn't have it. Correct. Not yeah. not one right now. It doesn't mean one can't be written, but you're right. Current we have other trails. So I believe we just don't currently have a policy for them. Also, if, if this is if this is um, brought down to a trail, then the landowners. I think I read this right. The land the land the abutting landowners can um, petition the select board at a future date to have that road pented, and that means putting the gate up. And I don't believe that should happen. I would. Ha I don't. I wouldn't I don't think, think that they can. could pen to yeah, road because yeah. they. Then um, you would restrict public right away. But I, like I said, we we could certainly I can look at find that. It. But I just want to say that the town plan, um, you know, that we certainly can. The select board can reclassify things as a trail. The select board, uh, the town plan, just says it's the policy of the town to to consider, you know, public input and to um, you know, seek public input prior to reclassifying or otherwise changing policies to rights away, which that is exactly what we're doing now. And would be, you know, con that policy would continue because you know, we'd have a, a certainly a warrant hearing. So, but what it says about trails doesn't say that anyone you know, can, uh, can pent it. Uh, maybe they could petition down the road, but it doesn't mean that the select board would would do it. This is my good book, bookkeeping here. But anyway, the town plan also says that trails are used exclusively for recreation purposes and not intended for vehicle access. And that basically landlocks the doctor's land and it keeps any uh, emergency vehicle access to his property. He's put a lot of money into that since he owned it and never asked the town for anything to keep that road up so he can access it with a, with his SUV. And also, and that's for fire protection and for um, ambulance, whatever. He, he's, he's put the work into that road to do it. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's legal that you can basically landlock his property. Well, it wouldn't be landlocked. He'd still have the right. You can you retain a right of way over that road. And what you're quoting from the town plan is that a policy or a recommendation? There's two different, you know, the town plan is, is made up of a lot of recommendations, um, not necessarily, you know, are they the policy of the town? But so Mr. Sedgwick, just like you, just like um, the Rogers, all retain access and, you know, uh, to, to your property because it, you know, it, it ends up, you know, the right of the land ends up going back to you. Let me see, I can read the, the Right here, let's see. It says, uh, 
Although a trail is not a town highway, it is a public right of way. So it is still within the select board's control. That being said, the select board is control is subject to and may be superseded by the principal or statutory rights given an individual um, a private right of way access for their property if the sole source of access to their land is by way of a discontinued town highway right of way. So Mr. Sedgwick loses nothing. He still retains access to his road and you know, currently, as the current state is, he doesn't even have to get a permit, you know, to work in the town's right of way currently. Yeah, but he still has to get permission from the abutting In which he's not going to get. You can't get it now as a class three. How is he going to get it for? Well, the class three would come from the town. It doesn't come from, you know, so if the select board does it, we obviously have time because by the time the lawyer goes and does the title search and we know for 30 days, we could certainly work on a policy regarding trails. Other towns have one, we just have not had the need to have one before. Um, but so besides your thought on, so you want it to be a class four road because you want the town to retain ownership of the road? Yeah, it's a, it's a policy of the select board not to not to, well, not just to downgrade. It's a it, policy. And it's not, I don't know why you go against policy. Well, um, I'm not sure. It's, it's see the select um, according to. I believe this is uh, town statute. But anyway, the the. the once it's once it uh, becomes a trail, then the select board can grant permission to enclose tent roads and trails by the owners of the land during any part of the year by erecting stiles, unlocked gates, and bars in places designated. Yeah. So that, well, that isn't that isn't right for his right of way to be gated and at the mercy of the um, abutting landowners. Well, it doesn't mean the select board has a lot of options they don't exercise just because they have the right to doesn't mean they're they're gonna. I mean, I don't see why anybody would do that to I could, uh, Mr. Well, yeah. Sedgwick. I mean, I, I don't see why any seated select board would do that to Mr. Sedgwick or, or uh, you know, or Andrew or the Rogers for that matter. I mean, well, if you pent that road, it loops up everybody. Put that in writing. I can't. The select board can't bind future boards. Then the they can make board, a decision. Then the select board's got to go by policy. It's I mean, you're, 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 uh, you're basically. All right, Brian, I'm going to cut you short because we're just we're chasing our tail here. So, I think what we have to do as a as a board is establish with the five of us if if the trail is what we want to reclassify this piece of road that has been recommended by our attorney um, as well as the town manager to do. Um, is, uh, I know you don't like hearing it, but you got to hear. You know, I'm trying. No, to but there's the thing this. they don't understand, Brian. Is there's a process? Okay, the process is. Just hear me out. The process is is the meeting is the board of the select people, right? It's our meeting. The public is welcome to join the meeting, and you're welcome to participate when acknowledged. You can't interrupt the meeting at any point in in the meeting. You'll have the opportunity to speak, which you've already had the opportunity to speak, and now we're starting to go around and around and around in circles here. So what I'm trying to do is make this meeting productive so that we can move forward. This is us saying when we go to the um, when we go to the public that we are going to class or this is our option. Now at that point you have 30, 45, 60 days or whatever to uh, yeah. to petition that. And the select board when they hold the hearing they're going to take testimony from you and possibly Mr. Sedgwick and the Rogers and, and uh, maybe Andrew or, or Bev or whomever. The select board, just because this is the poly, this is what they have to make a choice to not, either they're going to go to class four or trail, but they also have to be open minded because when they hear your testimony or, you know, um, Andrew's testimony or Bev's or, or the Rogers or Mr. Sedgwick, they can decide at that point to say, hmm, you know what? No we're not going to downgrade it to a trail. So just basically we need to get the legal notice out. So the legal notice is just 
you know, the start of the process and you will still participate in that and you'll still have the right to offer testimony. You'll also have the right to cross-examine witnesses because it's a cross, it's a quasi-judicial process. So don't, it's the game, it's not a game over here. They could listen to everybody's testimony and say, we're not going to do this. And then they could do the process again and say, but maybe then they say, you know what, after listening to everybody, this maybe right. should remain class four. So I don't want you to think that the door is closed. It's not. No, but I don't want to be able to speak my mind. I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know. how about the doctor's insurance company? How, how's that going to be? They're going to drop his, his, his homeowners probably because they're not going to be able to, in due time, you're not going to be able to get um, vehicles out there. So did he own it when Rochester threw up his other... He's, yeah, I believe so. He's owned it since, I want to say, 72. Yeah, so I'm sure he took that up with Rochester as well. But Mr. Sedgwick will be notified. He, we will expect, you know, he could give testimony. Even if he couldn't do it, he could do it via Zoom. So Mr. Sedgwick will be notified, and he'll be able to testify and say, hey, this is either a hardship for me or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, we, we, they're going to want to hear from him. And this is just basically us coming up with what are we going to put on the warning. So how, how are we going to warn the process so that we can start the process right now? So I'd like, I'd like to... Who's talking? Who's talking? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Gelman. Gelman. Oh, hi, Jeff. Oh, sorry. I didn't see who you were there. Just says iPhone. <laughs> I, uh, I really think it's a big mistake to throw up that road because it's one of the better roads that could be fixed up in the future if you ever needed it. There's a lot of there's a lot of other roads that are in a lot worse shape and that's an that's a pretty nice road out through there. And uh, for the town to, to give that up is is I think it's pretty crazy. Okay. That's all I can say. All right, well thanks. So do not want the town to downgrade. I wonder if um, so obviously, so that's the, um, the process you could start. If you're opposed to that, then the process you could start is to reclassify it to a class four road. But either way, we all know, let's not kid ourselves, that is not class three road. And it's certainly not standard. So it either needs to be downgraded to a four or to a trail. And, um, Can you outline why our attorney is recommending trail versus class four? Sure. Let's see what he said. So this has been let's see back and forth a lot. She At six so he so obviously you have a couple choices, which is we talked about. Let me see, let me find it here. I said the town blah, 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 blah. in this instant, the town plans to reclassify the right of way class. So we've had 18 emails and two phone conversations. I think that part of the reason that we talked about it was getting downgraded to a trail was the fact that it um that the fact is, sorry, that it only accesses, I have right, we talked about right road and Gilead and here, so I'm trying to sort through what's what. The, um, the fact is that, it, yes, it's an access to Mr. Sedgwick <clears throat> whose property is in Rochester. And I'm not sure the situation with his access or if he participated in that being downgraded or what sort of access he had, could have had, does have from Rochester side. But on our side, um, so we would be maintaining an access to a Rochester property. You know, the farm has access on it. I'm just going to use the term farm. It's obviously, um, you know, uh, right. Uh, Beverly and, and kids, you know, have access on the right. Brian has a right of way, which crosses, which crosses, right. The farm's property. Cause you also have an access on Byam road. Yep. And then there's a little square of Rogers that own like, I think like a square, looks like a perfect acre and um, in there. So 
think his pro- pro- thought process and certainly my conversation with him is you're going to bring that if you do work on it, you retain it as a class four to what? I mean, the farm has access. He's got trackers. Brian's coming in and out. He can access through Biome or through Gilead. You got an acre there. I don't know what they're doing with that. Not my business. And um, and Mr. Sedgwick's property is, you know, in Rochester. So, you know, so it's... There's a- Could you, you excuse me for a moment? Uh, Julie's aunt just passed away. I'm going to have to leave to go to the hospital. Uh, so I will bid you adieu. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Jean. Please give our best to Julie and, and your family. We'll do that. Yep. Bye. Bye. Um, do we do we know why Rochester? Because obviously, do, do you, what was the classification of the uh, Rochester portion of it before they downgraded it to a trail? Was that a class four that they downgraded to trail? Or I'm not sure. it was either three or four. And then I guess what would be their rationale behind that? Well, they, they did it a while went, ago. Well, I'm just saying they went to a trail. They Rather did. than keeping it a four, it'd be interesting. Though, maybe they're wrong. Well, yeah, probably yeah. that. The fact uh, that it went. Have you been up there where, where we're talking about? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. With your truck? Yes. I walked the whole. We thing. walked oh, it. Walked. Okay. Our... You didn't take your truck up there. Not where the Rochester Road is. No, we walked <laughs> our section with A and R and mm-hmm. Chris, myself, Alan, Last year. and a gentleman from A and R whose name escapes me. But so I guess that the the thought is so. <sighs> Yes, you can maintain it as a, you know, I mean, we obviously we have a class four road policy, which, you know, you'd have to do any maintenance to adhere to the policy in the way that it's written currently um, to it, to allow access for Mr. Sedgwick, a Rochester resident. I don't know. You know, that's my thinking in my head is, yes, I mean, it's a trail. So Jeff makes a point in the sense that, um, he doesn't, you know, want us to downgrade it, but at the same point to go where you can't go anywhere. I mean, it's a trail, but it, you know, once you get into Rochester, you're still a trail. It's not like it's a nice class four road on the Rochester side. Is it? It's, it's a lot better than on the Bethel side. And, <laughs> and I I tell you, well, and, we just walked it last night and it's a lot it's, better. It's a lot better on the Rochester side and the <laughs> one place that it's bad yeah, real bad and impassable was because it, of Irene. Is because of Irene, and uh, it would it would probably take me uh, half a day, and I could have that road passable for on the Rochester side. Yep, yeah, yeah, just past Sedgwick's, and so so, so what I'm saying is, is if there is ever an emergency and you couldn't get people out of that end of the road. It would not take much work, and you could have that passable to get to to the uh, wow. Hollow Road, which okay. will take but- back down back to the town of Randolph. And what I'm saying is, there's a lot more roads like the the Class Four road over on Byam Road. Yeah, would is a lot less would take a lot more work to upgrade, and I really don't think the town should give up a right away that could be fixed if it was ever an emergency and you had to get people out of there. All right. Well, that's a good point. Thank you. And, and then just in case you missed some of the discussion, Jeff, there are other roads um, and you just had mentioned one of them <clears throat> that we also need to discuss at, at a time of, you know, potentially reclassifying them as well. Um, these two roads have been pushed to the front. Um, um, through uh, Brian's eagerness to get something resolved. So that's kind of where we have um, the Gilead and the right road pieces before these other ones. But we do yeah. have some other ones that we have to address as well. Even the right road, the right road is is very, is a straight through road too that comes out on yeah. Tatra Hill. Um, yeah. So, so that could be updated in an emergency situation too. And, you know, we really ought to start thinking about that because there are times, you know, like Irene, when people are trapped up there that, uh, you know, you can update some of this, these roads and, and get people out to the, to the, 
to the hollow road or to Tatro Hill and get them to town. So they, they're not trapped in there for 14 days. Like, like they were, um, they're an Irene. Like Marty. Okay. Yeah. So I, okay. I really, really think you guys should take that in consideration before you start throwing up Gilead road, especially because that that's a pretty nice road out through there. Um, and it wouldn't take a lot of work to make it passable. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question is Andrew, what does the farm think about that becoming a trail versus a class four road? Does, do you guys have a preference? It doesn't sound like it makes much difference other than getting permission to do work on the road. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you guys had a, had a preference to what, you know, what the situation would be. So I was curious. Um, so Jeff makes a point about, um, you know, if, if certainly, I mean, if you've been through Tropical Storm Irene before. If I'm understanding you correctly from earlier, you were saying we have to, we have to, tonight, we have to designate which direction we're going yes. to start the process, but we, we can't say a trail or a class four road. We have to choose one. Right? Yes, because that was my first um, and try at it was I had said, well, what if we do either or, and then hold the hearing and then you could make the decision based on, you know, the testimony, is it going to be a trail or is it going to be a class four? And the town attorney's like, now you have to choose either or going into it. So you can choose that it's a class four. We can wait two weeks and I can get more information to figure out exactly um, you know, about the pent and, and address Brian's concern of if you decide to downgrade it to a trail. Um, my, my sort of follow-up question to that is, let's say we choose trail tonight. We go through the judicial process, but as a board decide, no on trail. Are we able to then just switch to class four or do we start the process over? Like we make the motion again. You start, to start the process okay. over. Cool. That's what I was yeah. so, curious about. So you have a choice. You can wait two more weeks fine to me, you know, and I can reach out to the town attorney, make sure that, that you are complete, that we're all completely clear <clears> on <throat> what happens. Brian obviously has a concern about penting the road. I have sent the town plan to the town attorney, so he's aware of what our, you know, uh, policies slash recommendations are. So we could do that. That would make everybody more comfortable. By then, Gene would be back, and you'd have a full board to make a choice. I don't have a problem with that. Just a little more research. So e even if there was some sort of <clears throat> natural disaster that takes place, I mean, if if this road was a class four or a trail, it wouldn't make any difference with emergency work out there. I mean, FEMA's mm -hmm. not going to pay for a class four road. No, and they're not going right? to pay for a trail. So, I mean, there yeah. is no difference on that. No, anything that you, you did know, so to that, get people so out would be out of pocket for the town because, <clears> yeah, FEMA's right. not going to pay for either or. Because the only way they would pay for anything would be a class three exactly. um, piece. So if you went four or a trail, that wouldn't matter when it comes to that. I mean, yeah. other than you would do the right thing, you know. Right. But right. then it's sort of back to Andrew's point of really it becomes then is it the town's responsibility for maintenance or is it the land like is the landowner responsible to get permission to do upgrades versus they would be if right, it was a class is, four but not if it's if it a trail so that's because the big difference because, becomes the landowner versus town's responsibility and right of ways right and right. the statutory process statutorily what is the town's responsibility as a class four road yeah, so I obviously ask, i was going to ask what's, what's, what's the town's responsibility to adhere to your class four road policy, which states that you, um, you know, what maintenance you will do up to, you know, public good as far as what, um, let me see if I have, I should have it right here. Um, so not plowing in the winter. Or no, you don't plow, of, no, you don't. There's no commitment no, to. Basically it just says Plowing that, in the winter or grading in the summer. It's, right, that town shall not provide any summer maintenance on class four highways except to the extent required by necessity of public good and convenience of the inhabitants of the town when staff and financial resources allow. Um, we don't provide any same thing for class four highways except to the extent required by the necessity and public good. And then anyone who has class four highway uh, or road, they can do work on it, but obviously they need to have a permit to do so. Um, 
And then it does say, it's the policy of the select board, um, you know, if you're talking about regrading or classifying it, you know, um, class four policies, that's where Brian found it, it's right here. Um, but it says reclassification or discontinuance will be done in accordance with 19 BSA 708. Um, a discontinuance to a class four highway um, will only be made in situations where the select board determines, this is where he found it, the public good, necessity, and convenience to the inhabitants of the town requires such action. And the town select board may require that the cost of upgrading a class, well, that's we're not going from a four to a three, God knows back there. But so <clears throat> that's the policy he found it in. Um, I was thinking town plan, but. Um, so that was the class four road policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the town still has no, I mean, we're basically by retaining ownership of it as a class four. It's not costing us any money. We're not getting any state highway aid, but we're not now anyways. But it, what it does is it retains control of the town to say what can and cannot be done on that road, which is different when, than when it becomes a trail. But can I, can I ask Brian a question? Yeah, sorry, you have your hand up. But um, so, and I'm sorry that I missed the previous meeting. So I'm also trying to play catch up a, a bit. You know? I did not mean to miss the last meeting. <laughs> um, so one of my understandings um, was there was you would put the water bars in without the permission from the town. And so then the town's action was to fill the water bars in. And, and part of the issue is water management, right? And so, and anybody can weigh in where I'm misspeaking here, but um, some of my understanding of going to a trail gives you that right without needing town permission, correct? Like that's, that's part of this right. whole discussion mm -hmm. is, so I'm, I'm curious from your perspective um, if that's part of the frustration you've been facing is why why fight to go to a class four if then you're still in the same boat of needing to get town permission to do the water management the way that you feel the water management should be done? Yeah, well, my biggest concern is I think if it's kept to class four, that maybe something will be able to be done to manage the water that runs down the road for six or 700 feet. But if it's, if it's uh, changed to a trail, then there's no guarantee that any update, any upgrading of that road is going to be able to be done for me or for the doctor or for Mr. Rogers because it's up to the abutting landowner to give permission. And we know now they don't even give you, they won't even give me permission to do to cut brush that's rubbing on cars on their property. So we know how that's going to go. So you're you're taking a chance. We're taking a chance as landowners of, of losing that, of being able to keep it at least passable. So that's a question I have to ask the attorney is do if do all the trail owners have to agree about the maintenance? I will say this, that town does have a liability, uh, a responsibility, excuse me, to maintain a roadway um, if the town isn't going to discontinue it. So if you choose, if you decide you're going to leave it to class four, that's fine, but then we're going up to right road or no, we're not. We're going to Gilead Road, and we're going to fix. Uh, we will have to deal with the water runoff on the road right there. Okay. So to an extent, how far we go, <clears throat> maybe just be to the crown of the hill past, you know, the beginning. I don't, you know, we'd have to take a peek. But we don't have to install new culverts or anything, but we'd probably have to get, you know, either, I don't know. But greater to, digital, it, to keep class four status. Yes, status you still, we, the yeah. town still has a responsibility for, you know, the water to keep the water off the road. So, but I certainly am happy to, um, you know, last comment from the attorney was that, you know, trail law is about as clear as mud. So <laughs> to quote him directly. So I certainly can find out if trails will require all landowners to agree to the maintenance, because I don't know the answer to that. Just add, yep. just add one more thing that to, you know, to stop this water from running down the road, it really isn't a big deal. It's, yeah, Jeff Gilman could go in there, I'll guarantee you in less than a day, and put some water bars in where they should be, you know, locate them strategically, and it'll stop the water from washing the road. It's not like it's a big deal. It's not like you guys are gonna have to put, you know, tons of money into it, it's, or, you know, no, it's just a responsibility it's not, it's not, we have. That we we have to stop that. This water is going to stop. Be stopped. You but know. you're going to do it without running into my fields. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I think that was the issue before. Was it wasn't necessarily well. 
the way it's set up now is you have to get permission from the town, which normally we're going to give you permission to work in the road anyways. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. really. Yeah. We, um, but the issue we had last time was the water bars were put in in a manner that discharged the water on to a property owner's property without permission. And that's why they were filled in. And, and so, we can't even do that as a no, town. I, I mean, can't, can't do all that of a sudden ever, go dump so. a bunch of water onto Andrew's property. I can't so that was, do that. So that was the I have heartburn to. last yeah. time. And, but when we walked it with A&R, there were some areas where, because, uh, you know, certainly Andrew has a unique, you know, sometimes you have the stone walls and there's a couple places where there's enough room between not in the entrance to the field, but where, but we walked it with a and R, but certainly not installing water bars in the middle of his entrance to the field. And, and we as a town cannot dump extra water onto Andrew's property that he's not already taking without his permission. We just, you know, can do. I think you're wrong there because- No, I'm not wrong the there because the I've had that statute. conversation with the state of Vermont about yep. us installing culverts and doing work. I can't add, to storm water onto somebody else's property if they're not already taking it. State statute says that select board can, I don't know if I have it, maybe from last That's week. That's fine, I know that, that they, can, they can put, they can direct water onto anybody's land that they feel necessary. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, a, that's a statute. No, I'm not, I'm just saying. Well, maybe the select board can. I know what, yeah. What's that? Maybe the select board can, but the individual person cannot. But and we wouldn't do that anyways. Right? We we, we well, are normally we, people who do it to us. Right. Normally so, we follow through and yeah. we ask yeah. whoever the property owner is, as we would like to put in a water bar that's yeah. going to outlet onto your property. Are you good with this location? Yeah, we just you work know. it out with people. Like, and we've done that with culverts after I really oh, gotcha. had to get some permission for some culverts. We do it now with, with so, people. So. so they're gonna say no and then what? And then you're you're gonna go by their no, we can still, the there's creative ways. You can sheet water. You don't have to like funnel it directly onto someone's property. You could sheet it into the woods so it's better. We could shift the lane of the road so that the road, instead of dumping towards the field, dumps towards the other side. I mean, you know, there's options. And we, there's a lot of places down there that you can do that. Yes. It'll, it'll we, go through the woods and not under the field. Yeah, we as, you know. And we had saw last year when we were out there, and it was pointed out by a and our gentleman that some of the issues that were done out there were done by recreational vehicles. So remember? Yeah, not the, us, not you. There not was a section of road there where people. it was all torn up and and what they had done there had taken away from the flow of normal um, stormwater. Um, yeah, so, because you know, yeah, so. when people want a Jeep, they want to go into the mud, so they're spinning it up. So if you had a nice drainage system, all of a sudden somebody's decided to, so when we right. walked it, we figured that out. But. So anyway, so that you can move on to the next issue. Oh, sorry, no, go ahead, Andrew, I'm sorry. They used the road from the end of March to November. Actually, I've seen box trucks up in there in November. Jeez. <laughs> GPS. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, you know, that oh, is right. yeah. probably, we ought to put a no outlet sign. We've had to put those up a lot more in places you would think we should not have to, but people don't drive by signage. People don't know that Randa McNally, when you say that, people are like, what? And so they drive by GPS. We've had over the Crossman's up on Spooner Road. These, Michael and, and Bill are pulling people out with an old Subaru. So <laughs> we finally put a no outlet sign there. We put one on Hooper Hollow and a couple other places. So it's, Well, there's a big blinking one at the bottom of Stowe Mountain that everybody gets stuck yeah. on every time. They go right by that thing. So anyway, so, so it's just up to the select board. You can either say, okay, you know, let's just go to class four or I can get more information about trails so you're clear and you can make a decision in two weeks. That's your point because you still have to move on to talk about Rape Road. Right, so what do we want to do about about the Gillard Road one? Do we want Therese to seek some extra information before making an establishment on the trail or are we good with moving towards trail or how would we like to do that? Uh, I think I lean towards maybe getting a little more information. Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. Um, Okay, yeah. perfect. Let's, let's exhaust everything we can. And, yeah. Thank you, Christy. And then, more information. That's what we're going to get. And then, and then in doing more information, what were the key questions that we wanted Therese to have answers for us on? I, I well, guess for me, I'd really like to, from the town perspective, understand the differences of trail versus, and I feel like we got there tonight, but I'd, I'd kind of like to hear the attorney's take on a bit okay. of it. 
of you know from in some of the scenarios like the emergency scenario right exactly I mean I think hearing I, from both Brian and, and Jeff that you know and, and I acknowledge that I have not seen this road where we were supposed to go up on Friday that we were going to go the 14th go but because uh, of yeah, but I, I might still whole. go up anyway because I'm yeah, you know yeah. I now want to understand it visually but um, yeah, I think just understanding a little bit more of what the differences for, from the town perspective are sure. of trail versus class four. And whether or not trails require all landowners to agree to maintenance. You want to know right, that. Right, the maintenance, yeah. And yeah. you want to know, okay, trail versus class four. What about emergency situations? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think Brian's point about, and I, I think we sort of answered it, but just hearing the attorney's side again of um, could a future select board permit a landowner to pent the road and to what detriment, right? To, to, I kind of agree with Therese that it's very illogical, but it doesn't mean it couldn't happen. So just because the language says it could means it could, and so we should we should explore what that means. As well, a I mean, board. I think also, I mean, in the realm of everything that we do as a select board, right? Any select board could come in <laughs> and, and completely reverse yeah. or change or double True. or anything right. that we do, right? Yes. So not just roads, yeah. but it could be every policy that we've done. Next select board could come in and cancel the, you know, the policy that we just implemented this evening, you know? Yeah. So I, I think there's never a... No. no. What about... 100% on What anything. about the width of this trail? Uh, Brian's worried about getting vehicles up there. Now, I've seen... I've got some trails in my woods that are trails that you could take a fire truck all the way to the other end of my woods, no problem. Yeah. It's a trail. But it is. But the trail it, stays. But you I could think take a fire truck all the way to the other end of the road if you so desire. Pretty, pretty I think wide. it's still 50 feet, and you would determine that, I believe. But I'm pretty sure I feel well, like the, it's three so rods, so 48 and a half. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm concerned about is 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 maintenance in the future when the when the abutting landowners say no, we don't want you going two feet on our land like they don't want water running on their land. Which is what well, that, that, that kind of takes that. that yeah, okay. I see. When you're talking emergency, are you talking like a, a flood or whatever? We're talking about like Irene, where Jeff is, and Jeff and Danielle. I want to be clear about that. Hello, Danielle. That what they're saying is that um, you know, if you had another Irene, and but it kind of came up in a different way. Jeff's and Danielle's point is at least, you know, how do you get people out? Um, so that's certainly and also we, not to be taken. Like I thought you were talking, remember emergency vehicles get to Dr. Sedgwick's place too. Fire trucks and ambulances and whatnot. Well, sure, but I mean, at some point, even on that road, he's gonna be taking a chance to live out there you because. Not, you not what chance he has. Yeah, I guess I might disagree about that. Steve. If, the, if the abutting landowners say, tell you, we don't want you, we don't want the road being up, which they do in that whole class right now, you can't get a fire truck up. But yeah, I, mean, I guess my, class, and yeah. I don't know because I'm not a lawyer, but my I mean, question would be, would he then have a civil suit against no the landowner preventing him from access and to the town possibly? Yeah. Right. Okay. And and the town for giving it up. I will add that to the list. I don't know the answer. I just, I don't see okay. the really advantage of Reason. why not keep it class four when, when it's your policy, the select board's policy, not to downgrade it class four rule. Huh? How much leeway would we have? This may be a question. Mm -hmm. How much leeway do we have in writing a trails policy? Well, the deal is that you can, we could. We don't have a trail policy, we so we're going, to rewrite, we're going to write one. So say that we were going to write a trail policy, because um, it's still a public right-of-way, but the, celeb, the select board's control is subject to and may be superseded by their individual rights as a um, landowner. As a landowner. But they, to access the property. Unless it's a pent road, they can't in any way impede travel on this public right of way. So right. if you if it needs to be fixed up so that you get up through there, they can't stop that. Because that's the same thing as putting up a goddamn gate. Plus if you have a trail, trail. Yeah, trail. Okay, you just said that the uh, you can't you, the landowner can you say you can't upgrade it. <clears throat> But you can't wash it out because that's the same thing as putting up a gate. Well, the thing is they can't do that. If the, so if it's washed out, someone's got to be able to fix that. Not, not necessarily. 
Yeah, the statute just says. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I, it's washing out. Now. It's yeah. washing out now, and I can't get permission. Is a, is a class three? You, that you're not understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't. I don't say things. Well. Have you Have you submitted a permit? No. Have you submitted a permit to the town? No. Then why are you saying you haven't gotten permission? The policy is submit a permit, <laughs> okay. right? Like you haven't done it, so. So trails. How do you know that? Yeah. Have, we, have we ever denied a permit on Class Four Road? I don't remember one, well, I have. but I'm just saying you, you haven't done it. So don't say that we aren't going to give you permission when you haven't taken those steps, right? I mean, right. okay. All right. So we will. So the trail policy, anyways. Um, so could you write one? Yes, you could certainly write a trail policy. But because our right of because our um, and it, because it's a public right of way, what the, the the statute says is that their rights may supersede ours. So I'm not sure we could write a policy. I know what you, you put know, in it. Till the cows come home, but right. we may not. The enforcement may not be there. That's what I should right. say. But if they let it deteriorate to the point where you can't travel over it, haven't you done the same the, thing as preventing the road? Well, basically, what so happens is impassable. you're and giving up the data. Makes it impassable. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you if yeah. you're the the landowner that owns 50 feet of this road, yeah, and you let it deteriorate point so uh, Sedgwick and Rogers and Brian can't get up past there to their property. You basically pented the road. It, you're right. In a way, you have, but you can't do that, right? Because what happens right. is the town, when you downgrade it to a trail, the town pretty much gives up their their a lot of their rights to the road. Like the statute says clearly, we do not have to maintain culverts or bridges on a trail. It's the only classification that says that clearly. So it's I'm just going to add, Therese, can I just add, you know, Sedgwick bought that land knowing it was a class three road. So I know he's not here, but, you know, he might have a problem with that. He might. Um, he would certainly be included in the, you know, when the select board decides what they're going to do to the road. He also possibly owned the property when Rochester downgraded his road to a trail. So I'm assuming that he participated in that and didn't just hang his hat so solely on his access and that <laughs> but, but I don't know, but he's still a chance to participate. Store all of his properties in Rochester? Because I looked at the tax map and I think some of his properties in Bethel. He pays no property tax to Bethel. Oh, no? No, nope, all to Rochester. Okay. Could be just the way the map, you know, is. But anyways, but he certainly would have ample opportunity we would encourage him to um, give us his you know certainly uh, his two cents once the select board decides uh, what they're gonna do all right so all right so we'll so get those more things, information on that yep all right so I will make a note sorry I'm also trying to take the minutes because Julie's not here so <laughs> all right so so you're moving on to the next one Yep, and then just and then the other one was there's 720 feet of Class Three road on the right road, um, <clears throat> which is basically the the turnaround at the farm to to the current Class Four piece. Yeah. So as Brian had disagreed with our measurements last time, I'm using 720 feet as a rough estimate. So basically, what we're talking about is obviously we all know the Class Three goes past um, the house you know out to you know where so it like turns off the sugar way. house yeah. yeah and um because it's a class three road there's class three standards last year um well i'm not sure if it was you andrew or your dad but somebody plowed it for me and um, because i can't get the truck through the you know that little piece and um so what it makes sense for the select board to down to reclassify that to class four, but turn around at the farm. That way it makes sense for the town to easily turn the town truck around. Um, then we're not going all the way up, you know, say all the way up, we're not going all the way to the house uh, and just turn around and, um, you know, turn around there. It makes it easier for the town. We can go in, easy to turn around and go back without having to deal with that piece. How that ever was class three is beyond me, right. but <clears throat> so, um, and that seems, you know, it's not a big section. So, can you hear me out on this? You don't want us to downgrade that to class. <laughs> My God, what do you want? 
So anyway, there's there's uh, there's bigger there's bigger legal issues here that than than what uh, reclassifying from a three to a four is, is going to take care of. Um, there, you've got a class three road that comes up here, and you've got a class three road that goes from here to here that doesn't need much work fixing up. You've got 600 feet basically in the middle that the town has allowed a business to set up a business in this town right away. And they've allowed it to go on. Andrew is a fourth generation now for the town to allow this. It's taken up three quarters of the right of way. Are you talking a, a about business, the farm? The farm, the business, the business. It was prior takes, to zoning. I mean, I, we have the business, no the business takes, the, their business takes place in the town, in the town right away. There is no right away. So I don't know how you can reclassify something. It's like selling me a car, but not giving me a car, but giving me the bill of uh, the uh, title. You got the, there's no right away there. It's, it's three quarters gone. It's, it's down to maybe 15 feet. So what, what I'm saying is, if before you decide to reclassify that, I'd like to hold the meeting up there, like we were supposed to have. Yeah. And it was actually the, the town um, lawyer is the one that kind of suggested you we could go up and take, we're going to do it this spring and then. Yeah, when we do have to, I mean, it's part of the process, but as you know, because your attorney, was it Mr. Tarrant, Attorney Tarrant, whoever your lawyer is, sent the town a letter, which you know, and part of it was that you're, part of the concerns that you outlined were A, we didn't plow it, so I reached an agreement with, with, with Rick, Rick plowed it for me for the winter. Then the agreement, well, you know, you were concerned because the town had allowed the houses to build so close to the road. That was so far prior to zoning. I, we couldn't, I couldn't deal with that. I mean, I have no idea. And the fact that the farm itself has, you know, there's different zoning regulations for the farm, but the farm was in business long before Bethel had zoning. So while I understand what you're saying, that's beyond, that ship has sailed a long time ago. The only thing we need to do is reclassify this road so that the entire thing is a class four. You get mad because we either don't maintain it or you're mad because we sand it or, or whatever, but we need to put some clarity there and it doesn't make any sense for the town. We don't have a truck that's small enough unless we bring one special in from the one ton to plow the section past the house up there, it, it, it just is completely illogical. So mm -hmm. it makes sense to drown grade it to a four. The fact that the farm has existed for X amount of generations is so far beyond us. I, we can't do anything about that, nor would. Uh, there's, there's no such thing as uh, um, it's nothing grandfathered and it's the, the, the state statute is clear. Any obstruction put in the in the right of way needs to be moved. And your, I know your lawyer said that um, yeah. these these buildings were historic, probably before the roads were laid out. Well, that's not true whatsoever. My grandfather built those in the 40s, in 50s, maybe into the 60s. Built the buildings and did the addition on the house. And he was a land baron. He was like he was like Webster, like uh, Ted Green. He was like. Uh, Ray Durfee, it, the town didn't tell them what to do, they did. And when he bought the land above there, he gated it and kicked everybody out. And that's the way in the town, just let him get away with this. Mm -hmm. And they've allowed this business that, that takes up this whole road. You, you can't, you know, it's, they, they conduct their business in, in the road. There's kids, there's machinery, there's, you know. They, sure, but and you, and as the, you just said, if he built them in the 40s, <clears throat> what we have, there's nothing we can do in our town. When you're a lawyer, wrote the letter to the town, the town, I know you weren't happy with the town attorney's response, but that's the way lawyers work, but there's nothing we can do ab about that now. Those 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 uh, buildings, their home and the garage or whatever to the right, when I'm looking straight on, here's Beverly's home and here's, we can't do anything about that, but the select board does have the right to reclassify that road from a three to a four. That's all. The other issues have been adjudicated between your attorney and the town attorney. If you weren't happy with the town attorney's response, I, you know, I'm sorry, you'd have to speak. You know, I don't know how to answer that for you. Well, I'm kind of hoping that we could get it resolved here somehow without going, but I can see that it's not going to. So, and, and it's a clear, it's a clear statute. It's a clear. I don't know what you don't understand about the statute that any obstructions put in the right of way have to be removed. So, so I, you're saying what? Well, so I move their house. So I well, I well, guess either that or I'll tell you what uh, I'll tell you what my attorney Paul when I talked with him, 
the first time, he said, you're either going to have to, he, he said they have no choice, you're either going to have to uh, move the buildings or build a road around it. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no other alternative. Yeah, and uh, our attorney did not come up with that at all. Well, so. because, because they're saying that the buildings were put there before the road was laid out. I think the road was laid out like in 18... I'm not sisters. sure, but I do know that your, I don't believe that your attorney responded to our attorney once he got our response. So if he had further questions or concerns, you, I I'll, that's above my pay grade. I'll be on. I would have to turn it over to the town attorney. I, I wouldn't even know how to respond, but since your attorney didn't, I just assumed it was a mute point and you understood our point. So I, I did, it, it was kind of left. And I, maybe that's my fault, but it was left that, okay, let's have a meeting. Your lawyer suggested this, let's have a meeting, but we can't do it now to anything to the road because it was, by then it was December, November. I think and so, so we left it at that. We're going to go up and have a meeting so, with your select board so you can see. And as far as a turnaround at the farm, there is no turnaround at the farm. The buildings are in the town right away. Mm -hmm. And it's the, where you're turning around for years and years and years, you've sanded like over 100 feet of private uh, property down to their milk house. It costs thousands and thousands of dollars per year to sand that seven days a week sometimes, and just for the for the uh, privilege of turn, you're you're rewarding him to, for the privilege of turning around on his property. That was well, I know and the safety you, of the town crew. Yeah. There's no safety of the town crew when you when you're backing down to your milk hey, house. Hold on. Where so is, we're getting, we're getting yeah. no, but where the is the sand coming out? The sand right. is coming out in front of okay. the tires. And I have asked the current road foreman and the road foreman before that, and they all say the same thing, that for the safety of their equipment and their guys, they stand. I don't think it's thousands and thousands of dollars, but I will say in regard to your, your comment about understanding, I think that what our attorney was referring to was looking at the reclassification of the road. We knew that we were, that um, I believe our attorney was clear in that we felt there was no way we were going to ask the rights to move a building. I think that maybe the misunderstanding was that we were gonna look at the road as far as reclassifying that three to a four. Um, but I can certainly touch base again. I'm obviously gonna have to talk to the town attorney. I can revisit that topic. I have his letter and can ask him another follow-up question about the buildings, but I, you know, he, was obviously clear was, about that. It was a no. Was, I'm sure he worded it was uh, so that the select board can take a look at the okay, at, well, the, road, at the road there as it is now, and that's what I'd like to do. Have the meeting up there before you decide to. Well, and it'll be part of the whole thing about taking testimony. It's going to be the same thing. If the select right. board agrees to downgrade from a three to four, it's the same statutory process. Everybody will be notified. The utilities will be notified. Mortgage holders will be notified. So everybody and their mother gets notified that we're going to re, you know, downgrade that section right there. Um, and frankly, do you own, if I'm looking at Beverly's house, and then here's, do you own right here, right beside, behind that shed, or are you even in a butter to that section of class three? No, not to, not to the above. Okay. Just, just, just pass where the, just, just pass where the um, class four, yeah, the so class four road stacks so a couple hundred butter couple. to this section. Okay. Right. Right. But also, um, if you're going to leave that road as it is, then that right away has been altered. It's been altered from three rods down to probably less than one rod. And when you alter a road, um, when you alter definition of alter is a minor or major change, physical change in the highway, such as a change of width, then, then that requires the town to do a survey of that road to find out exactly where the right-of-way is. And that's, that's, that's state statute. Right, and we have a survey because Al Lana, or Mr. Lana did yours. He didn't and, survey exactly where the- where No, the but we talked was. about it and he <coughs> gave a layout of where, you know, so we went through that, but I also had addressed that with the town attorney as well. But, so take the buildings aside and your desire to have us make them relocate their buildings. Do you care if that section of three is downgraded to four? Yes. 
Why? Because it affects those buildings that are in the right of way are all um, tax exempt buildings. They're farm buildings. You get no tax. You get no tax benefit off those buildings. When I I've got I've got 2,400 feet of uh, road front road frontage property that someday is going to bring in positive tax revenue for the town of Bethel. And with going through a, a 15 foot section, and the reason you can't get a truck through there to maintain it properly, because that one section has been narrowed up with buildings. And that's against the law. And I was hoping, I guess I guess if I was- I'll have to follow up with him and re read that letter. I haven't reread that letter since, you know, I mean, I haven't read it again okay, since we sent it. So I will look at it. Um, but as far as, yes, we all know that you've subdivided your property and wish to subdivide. So you're going to, you know, obviously your desire is to upgrade the class four section so that you can sell, you know, your subdivided lots. It's all fine, well and good. And, um, but that class, that section right there, um, uh, for us to, you know, to, to downgrade it, aside from moving the buildings itself, I mean, it was always... I'm assuming it's been narrow since you were a young man or a little boy, maybe. But um, you know, so I, just, I guess I just don't think that little piece of Class Three road being downgraded to a or reclassified as a four affects your long-term development goals of your property. But well, when you bring, when you bring a client up there to look at the to look at the property, number one, you drive in the dooryard and you automatically think. This is dead end. You right. don't no, go sure anywhere. You, you got you got buildings like this, and even if you even if you think it's a town road, you say, "Well, I, I'm not going to drive by this this person's house. The house is right here." And uh, I can guarantee you, if you own property past the farm, since my brother has owned it or my grandfather owned it, I can guarantee you that you would see the disadvantage mm -hmm. of of that. But you bought the property knowing the layout of the road as it existed. Well. Things have developed. Things have changed um, as far as the and it could end up with a in, in a civil suit as well with the town included um, for us not being able to enjoy our property. We have the legal right to enjoy our our property without uh, without interference or in, in privacy and without being harassed. As and that has been happened. Better addressed yet to the town. So we're straying anyway. from class three to four, but um, so I guess my question would be for you, does the farm have any concern about us or feeling one way or another about reclassifying that from a three to a four? No. Okay. Just wanna make sure everybody's- Are there, are there any other landowners on this stretch of road or No, just... I think the actually only abutter to where we want to reclassify from a four to a three, the actually only abutters are the farm. However, because Brian has a right of way, he becomes the other. Um, there may be the, I'm gonna say this wrong, is it Taran or Tarant oh, or Turan? I see I totally slaughtered it, my apologies. Um, has property in Rochester and they may have a right of way. When I went to Rochester to look, um, a lot of their roads don't have a 911 address, but they say like zero, whatever the road is on the Rochester side. Um, and it leads to there. So that was one of the reasons that the attorney would do a one person title search is to make sure, because didn't your dad own a piece <coughs> with, the, with them? Yep. And do you still, or did you? No, it's been split. Okay, and um, so they may have a right of way. So, but as far as the actual abutters to this piece, it's strictly just the farm, but mm -hmm. because people have a right of way, they would be notified. Um, so that was why when I went to Rochester to look at the map, and that's why we would send the attorney over there to, to do a one person title search. Put out. I would like to have the meeting at the, weren't you, you, were, you said the 26th, you thought? I said that we would look at like the 14th, but because so many things have come up and now we have to have a, a, because we now we have to have the town attorney do a one person title search. I don't know when he's gonna, you know, that could take him a couple weeks. So the hearing would be part of this process. Again, where the select board would take testimony, they'd hear from you, they'd hear from Andrew, Bev, whomever, maybe the, the other folks that butt, and they would take the testimony, and then they'd come back, and they would have 
take the testimony that they would say, okay, you know what, no, we're either gonna leave it at class three or we're going to move forward with um, reclassifying that section of the three. So mm -hmm. you, there will be a meeting there um, at some point. I just can't give you the date certain because too many things are in the air right now as far as the attorney's schedule. It's been like a year. How, you know, <clears throat> I know. I, I'm, asking for, I'm asking just for a simple meeting for the for the select board to come. So up you and want see the it. select board to just? They can all certainly drive up and see it on their own. Well, what's your uh, have a meeting? What, what's your what your attorney suggested? Have a meeting up there to have a, the select board up there to meet and take a look at it. Yeah, and I I will like I said just said, I'll reread the letter. I thought he meant to do the hearing process to possibly down or reclassify it from four, three to four, uh, but I will revisit that and, and read it again and ask him for clarification if I have misinterpreted that. But the select board certainly can drive up to the right farm. It is class three and they can drive up and see for themselves, um, you know, there's the farm, there's the house, here's the, so that they could visualize if they haven't been up there. Chris and I have been up several times. But there's other things I could go over with them. For instance, there's like three curb cuts that have been put in there without permission. The, the whole slope of the land have been, has been changed. New access road has been made from the farm into the town road without permission. Um, you've allowed the <clears throat> him to do the ditch work on the on the ditch on the left hand side, and he is and he doesn't allow the ditch to be cleaned out or hasn't because it runs down in a culvert that's been there for 80 years. He doesn't want water running through the culvert that's been there for 80 years. So that that ditch has been plugged ever since Gary Slack was in in the water. All comes down from the dooryard off the off the roofs and it comes down and every couple of years the town has to go up with 10, 15 loads of fill and grade it off and then it, in another 10 years we get some heavy rain it all washes out again because the ditches you haven't the t you nobody stood up to my brothers is okay. nobody stood up to my grandfather nobody stood up to my brother well i'm not gonna <clears throat> you say you say a lot that we have allowed you know i i can't speak for <clears throat> every road foreman that's ever conceded in the relationship that they had certainly um, whether they have ditched or not, we also have, you know, 80 miles of road, and if they weren't concerned about it, they weren't, it wasn't a high priority for them at the time. So I can't speak to what past, uh, you know, road foremans have done or not done. Um, people do curb cuts, um, certainly, um, you know, and they apply for the process. Some people, you know, farm access is, um, if it's just farm access that exists, it's generally something we don't, really look at and, and it not just there we do that in other places so but as far as that's just a lot of consideration and I and I just you know I just can't speak to that but that's because why I could show these I could show them if, if they just have a meeting up there mm -hmm. I can point these things out so they can see what is what is what they've allowed what the town not you guys but what the town in the past has allowed to happen to that to that piece of property has been completely taken over by the by four generations uh, it, without any consideration of anybody that owns land past it. I, I, get, I was hoping we could settle it, but I can see probably the court's going to have to settle it. And uh, yeah. if that's the way it goes, that's sure. the way it goes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I'm just saying to you, I'm not saying there's no resolution. I'm just saying to you, I can't speak to it because, right. so because for, I can't. So for now, Therese so will know. be in, ta in yeah. contact with our attorney to figure out about the message that from a year ago on the meeting or not meeting or whatever that, what that means. Now, I know for tonight, the, you know, for us to put on the warning is, you know, do we want to move forward with reclassifying that class three section of right road in question down to a four? I guess my opinion at this point is we should probably move forward with classifying that as a class four because the only other option is to keep it as a class three, right? So if we keep it as a class three, then there's no hearing, right? right? So if we move to a class four, there can be a proper hearing process. We can hear from um, all the abutting owners, and then we can make a correct decision on moving yes. forward with a class four or keeping it as a class three. Part of that will be a site visit, which is- Right. Yeah, it will money. be a yeah. site visit, so it's we, testimony, yeah. it's, yeah. it also- We also need to do a survey because the road is being altered. That's a town I'm, statute. I'm going to yeah. ask. You know, I mean, we so have changing classification to class four. On the right road piece? On the right road piece, yes. Okay. I also need to know how many. Hold, hold on. Wait. You're going 
the process. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, I just want to put your feathers all the time first. I'm sorry. It, it's just a processing. It's a if you're talking over somebody, then we can't. I'm again, sorry. it's. I'm sorry. It's you know everybody it's only, gets a turn. It's the only Owen, time. It's the only time every time Owen has, has ever been here, have you you've been able to voice your opinions, right? Yeah. You'll have you'll have proper time, everybody. Yeah. So right now, all we're doing at this point is, like we were just talking about, it makes no sense at this point if we say, well, we're going to keep it a class three, then why do we even have a hearing, right? So if we we say that we want to move it to a class four, then we will conduct a proper hearing on site. We can bring you'll have your opportunity to bring um, your testimony as well as uh, the firearm would have their opportunity to you know um, to have a rebuttal on whatever you might say and we we can see the outbuildings and things like that at the same time while we're up there you know mm -hmm. so we got a motion. so there's a motion on the table yep. with Paul we'll second. and a second by Lindley all in favor Aye. okay so yeah so the so we've got that situated yep. and so I will ask some the attorney his question about do we need to, Brian is saying, since the road has been altered, um, and I don't have time to sit here and read statute, take the minutes and talk this through. So I'll find out if, if since Brian feels that the road has been altered, if we have to pay for a full survey. So I'll find out, because I don't know the answer off the top of my head. And again, Brian, I, I don't think anybody on the board, including myself, are playing favoritism towards any party. Um, I think, like myself, I'm all about the formal process, so just sticking with the formal process um, in, in a meeting format. Um, and I think in this case, what we're trying to do is look out for the best interest of the town as a whole, as well as the property owners in question, and see what our best, you know, our best um, plan of attack for this piece of road. And and like like I had talked about earlier to Jeff there, that we do have some other roads in the town you know, that we need to look at as well. Um, and we're trying to do, we moved your roads up first because, because you had, um, you know, some questions that you wanted answered, you know, in a timely manner. Where the other roads in question in town right yeah. now, we're, we're, you know, we'll put them as a priority, but we don't have any burning questions to get it hand, uh, settled. So, yeah. so we have shuff, shuffled around our board schedule to meet your accommodations. Um, and, and don't feel that we're playing any favoritism. I, I will be a little defensive myself when I hear things like, like you guys let or you guys played favor because I can tell you in the seven years that I've been here, I've never once probably even had a discussion with the right firm. Um, I, I've been down to the, you know, I probably have had more discussions with you than I've had with them. So mm -hmm. I guess if I was playing favoritism, it's probably a little more to you than them, right? I, but I disagree with you. so what, I, take it, I take a defense when, when we hear things like, you allowed this or you allowed that, but that might have been something for 25 years ago. I didn't even live in this town at that point. So all I can say is the seven years that I've been here yeah. or the Almost four three, years three, be three and, or that three she's been manager. here, you know, we, we yeah. conduct business one way um, and we can't, again, yeah. say what the next board might do or the next administration or the next yeah. road foreman might do, but we can tell you what we plan on doing right now. Yeah, and as so, far as I'm certainly not aware of any you know, we find, you know, we do, things come about slowly in municipal government, but you do find out if there's, someone has a curb cut or somebody's built something or there's a zoning violation. I mean, a lot of times this stuff just, you know, comes up and, and perhaps at some point, a uh, road foreman uh, did give your brother permission to do some work. We do allow that. Sometimes we'll do a quid pro quo. If somebody's doing some work, we will allow that. We'll say, hey, you know, yeah, they'll do that and we're going to do this or, you know, whatever. We try to work together with people. And, and um, so, you know, I, I just, so as to what uh, the culverts or the ditching or whatever, I, I am happy to, you know, send the road foreman up there to take a peek and, or, you know, see what's going on. I, I don't know. I mean, I know they've been up because obviously they um, do, do maintenance on other roads. Well, we, you know, we would have to meet with just to take a look Andrew at the ditches as well. Yeah, because yeah, Andrew, that's fine. you know, for sure. So, so as far as we go, the class four, <laughs> but, um, the right road piece, we're moving yeah. forward with that. So yep. I'm going to have the town attorney. So we can move forward do, with that and set the, the date. Yeah, we'll have them do the title, title search. searches. Yeah. And then as far as the other one, the Gilead section of road, 
Yeah. We have some questions to bring back to the next meeting to yeah. then make a decision on how we want to warn that road. So, so I'm not going to have them do a title search, you know, right. until mm -hmm. we have both properties. Right. And I'm but not I just want to make sure that we have Rochester okay. twice. So, um, so because because Owen has been patiently waiting here for the mm -hmm. longest time to get his catering event done. <laughs> Oh, wait, I just had one more issue yep. I just want to bring up is in regards to cow manure. So you will have to make, um, and, and I know you certainly know the process, is to A&R um, because certainly the rights applied for Andrew himself and, and got a the cattle crossing sign and dealt with that. So I just want to say that if there's a violation, I know that you took pictures of the 2016 A&R regulations, but that's beyond our purview. So as far as whether toxicity to humans, I, I just can't answer that. So there's an easy online form and you can write to the A&R and, and, and I know you've done it before so they can answer your question. So I just, I didn't want you to think that I didn't look at that. You're in charge of the town roads though, right? So they the, certainly- the, town, the select board in the, in the town, the select board is in charge of the town roads. And it says here the cattle's Cattle crossing signs will be put up where cattle must, where they must mm -hmm. use the travel portion of the road. Well, they're using a thousand feet of it where their land is over here, all open, and they could be driving <coughs> the cows up there. And would you like to go up there with your grandkids, six of your grandkids, and walk up the road for a thousand feet and have cow shit all over your feet? And should you have to step around it and avoid it? It's a town, it's, it, the road is for public use, it's not for cattle use. Andrew, can you? You cross there where I don't know in relation to where you pasture your cows. So I would I know that you went through the correct process and you dealt with Marco and you got the sign and it was placed. I don't know the relationship of where you cross to where your pastures are or whether or not you can crop keep your cows more to one side before you cross. I, I don't know your the cows have to cross and they have to use the road at some extent to get to their pasture, especially the longest pasture or the furthest away from the farm. So you cross And to say that it's open no. pasture right beside the road where there's a brook right there. Right. Okay. So the when you come up the brook. <clears throat> I'm just asking Andrew. So Andrew when I go up, because I've been up to, you know, walked it, driven it, whatever. Um when I go up I know where the cattle crossing sign is, of mm -hmm. course, and I know where the road is, I assume that goes to the sugar house yeah. or something out there. So there is a ditch right there that goes down to the brook. So do they, I don't know where the cows cross, but they come up from the sugar house and they go there? Inside the sugar house. Yep, and they come up that little access and then yep. they go up the then floor. They, then they come out, they go across, then go across the road there. Yeah. By where the, there's an old gate post on either side. Okay. They go across the road there to get to two paddocks there. And then otherwise they have to go up the road. No. Okay, all right. I was just trying to get my bearings, but as it says by statute regarding cows, that's clear on the cattle crossing, but it also says that cattle, um, basically as long as, and the statute is clear about this, I have it labeled cows, it specifically says that, um, that the cows, I'll tell you what it says, and then you can, this is what I said to you, is, um, as long as if they're not knowingly, you know, they're not running at large, basically. That's what it comes down to. There was even a whole, um, you know, Supreme Court, I guess, decision about it. But we're not allowing the, the cattle, horses, sheep, goats, or swine to run at large. And they define run at large. So you'll, I'm sorry, but you'll have to take it up with A&R. Just, I just wanted to let you know that. So to, know. as far as the toxicity of cow manure. I guess I'll take it up with my attorney because it says, uh, it says, it specifically says that uh, the cows can use the road where they must and they don't need to, he's talking about the brook crossing, they pasture the cows in the brook and, and it's all open land on the left hand side, right from the, right from the There's a brook right on the left hand side. Where, where the brook is on the left hand side where you pasture them, then it goes right into your tool shed, it's all open, and then there's a patch of woods from here to the wall. It's that's the that goes through it. And, and that goes right to your huh. pastures. You yeah. go in your pastures all, right. all on the left hand side. So it says right here, town mm -hmm. highways where cattle must mm -hmm. use the traveled surface of the highway to reach fields or pastures. So it's, Who must? They don't, they, there's no must there. Yeah. They're using it as a convenience, <clears throat> not, it, it's not, it's not. Well, we could look at that later, but at this point, but no, it's regarding like the toxicity of cow manure 
and them got the road or the river, that's A and R. That's 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 my comment. The A, the A and R. We know how the A and R is with the with the farmers. They're right in their back pocket. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. That's just that. They oversee all the farms in the state. We're gonna we're gonna move forward. We've spent quite a long time on these items this evening. So, um, again, we have a plan in place for the next meeting. We're moving forward with the with the right road piece and the Gilead Road piece, we'll be back in two weeks to make a decision on that one. Just one more, one more quick thing. No, no. <laughs> For you to be with, really quick. <laughs> Just so the town is aware, in your right away, there's buried fuel tanks too okay. that, were, that were never right. reported. Why, need, why don't you bring your whole list of- That need of, to be cleaned up. Bring, you, bring your whole list of things. That the town has allowed. Brian, okay. We're gonna move forward. So Owen, you're next. <laughs> huh? That's why I'm here. Yes. Um, because of the request hopefully, of Jesse is also here. Um, there he is. Yeah, it's weird now. It's different. Oh. So Jesse's actually going to do the talking. I'm just here for backup dancing. So are you talking about your request to cater? Yes. On Graham Street. Okay. Hi, Jesse. Hi. So is there something that you want the select board to know other than the events on October 8th from 4 to 10 at 49 Graham Street? No, I'm only here if you all have questions for me. Um, I know Pam, Pam had sent me an email saying that wasn't an actual um, address. And so yeah. I got that figured out. Yeah, what will end up happening is Mark Bocher owns land up there on Graham Street and I don't think it had a 911 address assigned. And of course, Pam lives on Graham Street, so she couldn't figure out where this was. And our concern was that the select board, you don't really want us to issue a permit on a ex non-existent address. So we finally figured it out um, <laughs> because the new permits from the uh, Department of Liquor Control don't tell us who you're catering for. So we couldn't tell. That's why Pam reached out to you, Jesse, because the new forms are, are weird because it's all online and we didn't know who it was. So then we were really in the dark going, what? So there they is just no put the address, but not the... Yeah, and you had to hand write it in. Yeah, as you can <laughs> see, it's a totally different permit than what you're used to. Um, it just says location event, 49 Graham Street, wedding reception, the date and time, but it doesn't <laughs> say anything about who, you know, yeah. So if it had been an ad, you know, someone who has Could've a house, there, we would have figured something. it out. But yeah. yeah, we were, I said to Pam, isn't that near your house? And she's like, there's no 49 grams. So we were, we were a wee bit confused, but we figured it out once you told us who you were catering for. So that's not your fault. That's the state of Vermont for not asking for enough information. I just need a motion to approve. Babes bar request to cater oh, again on Graham Street somewhere on Graham Street. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. I was going to say it's not a very long street. Yeah. Uh, only a couple of houses. Yeah. Um, Thank you. White River Valley Ambulance Thanks, Board Jesse. discussion. Yeah. So it's just um, Warva. Our current representative has been unable to attend meetings mm -hmm. um, due to circumstances beyond their control. So Warva has forwarded their bylaws. Thanks, Owen. Thanks, Owen. Um, to me, which state a director may be removed without cause only by the vote of the town for which they serve. I have drafted a letter to the current representative and just out of due respect and courtesy, I think we should send them a letter, give them two weeks to, you know, contact us. I've had ongoing conversations with them, but Orva has got a big budget coming and we need representation. And mm. they have been calling um, us, the representative. How often do they meet or is it a monthly, <laughs> monthly thing? Or? And <clears throat> Dave Aldrighetti is mm. interested in the position and the, her, the current representative wanted Dave Aldrighetti to take the position. But because Orva has such a big budget coming and we are the second, we're Randolph than us, we're the biggest, second largest contributor we need representation and do we have not, to do anything formally at the board to either add or yes. substitute Dave or we will have to. So my person has served us for a long time and mm -hmm. I just feel like out of respect and courtesy to them, I have drafted a letter, a nice letter to send to them and um, just let them know that in two weeks we're going to be removing them and replacing them with Dave. I just feel like Okay. to do it without notice would be disrespectful yeah. and for a lot of years of service. Yeah. So 
Um, and it's and you said that person was already kind of well aware. Of <clears throat> yeah, we've had multiple conversations, the, but they haven't. You know, but they haven't nice. resigned. And gotcha. You know, it always leaves a bad taste in your mouth to do that. But we need representation. So. Okay. Um, so that will be back on our yep. agenda for next <clears throat> in two weeks. Yep. So okay. I, I've drafted a letter and I'll put that out. There's nothing for unless somebody has public input on rescue plan. I'm And just um, as we talked about, well, you weren't here last time. Gene was, but he's not here this time. <laughs> <We're> here. <laughs> so as we had talked about um, quickly, in, um, was with Teresa's um, contract, which we thought was the end of September. It's really yeah, mid-October. I came in September 18th, coming up, so I was confused. Um, October 15th, it ends. That if... Um, well, the, the two options, one is as a board meeting together with a board and it might, it's more difficult with the board because we would have to meet once or twice or something to mm -hmm. talk through it. Rather than do that would be to um, just authorize myself to negotiate um, Teresa's contract negotiations um, and then bring those terms to you at the next yeah, board sure. meeting. Yeah, you should see my list of demands. And um, sure. and uh, it's fine. It's going to take you and I so twenty minutes. I, I, I would negotiate with her. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, you do no. that. So I would I would bring that to you uh, at the next board meeting, and we could talk through that, and then. Yeah. Um, and I think the fifteenth is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, uh, my contract ends yeah. on the fifteenth. Okay. Move to approve. Uh, authorizing Chris to negotiate terms with Teresa on behalf of the select board. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, anything left on the town manager's report? I just want to let you know I received another grant um, that I applied for. It's, it's a brick, called a brick grant. I can't remember what it stands for, but it's from FEMA. It's for a scoping study for the box culvert on Gilead that's between um, oh, Jeff Gilman's name of that road to his camp anyways losing it anyways from there to um from his, the bridge to go to his camp and winterberry right there there's a large box culvert so we received um $81,375 grant. Obviously, there's a match for us of like 20000 but for them, for us to hire someone to come in and do a scoping study uh, and to figure it out. And then once we get the scoping study, we get it done, we'd be able to apply for hazard mitigation grant money to actually do the replacement because that's mm -hmm. a very large, I've been say, down under the road expensive. in there. It's a large one. But the good news is AJ and Morgan were going through all the files at the town garage and they found the original plans, specs for that, which is awesome. That'll help with the RFP. And they actually found two projects, two large box culverts for Liliesville. So anyway, so mm -hmm. we did receive the money and then, uh, so it'll be it's FEMA money and it'll be at least money to design and then money for construction later. Cause that's going to be a bear. I'm not even sure. Hey, not, not that, that I want to go open this Pandora's box, yeah. but where, where are we at in regards to the, the bridge? We are in a holding pattern because FEMA, it takes a while to get through their process. We have sent them plans. We ended up re leaving the bridge basically where it was. We were gonna move it and that was just gonna become a whole nightmare. Mm -hmm. So we're, so the bridge is back where it was. They have done, you know, borings and studies and hydrological studies and God knows a ton of money that we've spent on it. And, um, there it's back to FEMA now so it's sitting there we're just waiting for them to approve the um, design so yeah. that'll be well I just a million and I think it was a, originally change. a project that was supposed to get done last it was year, right. but then it was going to get done this year which now sounds like next year yeah because we have an, we got another extension on it because um, it just well we obviously had an engineer that we let go and then we had to rehire and so mm -hmm. it's been a process but then they were deciding whether or not they're we're going to precast a bridge and bring it in but the price tag on this thing is insane right. um it's too so bad we just can't leave that temporary I one there even I, we I know temporary one would be the easiest i know and we went through that i even the guy was leaving hobie gates i was trying to get him on his last you know moments that for the state of Vermont, it just, I'm like, donate us and maybe bridge the I said, just sell it to me. I'll <laughs> buy it. 
Nope, he won't. He wouldn't do it. Right. And um, so, you know, the hope I think is that we go out to bid over the winter, but it won't really impact anything on Gilead per se. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of traffic delays mm -hmm. the, depending on the bridge and pouring it, but it's got a yeah. hefty price tag to get to one house. That's for sure. Right. But anyway, so I got the grant for the for the scoping study, so we'll do that. Okay, and then select board meeting minutes from the twelfth. I did have something I want corrected in there. I'm just going to yep. find our meeting minutes here. Sure. There was some wordage in there which pertained to. Um, to the water bars on. Yep. So uh, Brian had sent a change, which I had made in my second draft, which you have. And then he sent a, another draft, but I, I made the correction I thought that he first wanted. But um, So where it says, Chris clarified the board did not have them filled in as Brian installed them without a permit. And I guess just the reason behind, the reason behind that is that they were installed so the outlets were so the outlet of the water was pouring onto an adjacent property owner. So that was that was the reason why we filled those in. But so you I, I just that thought clarified. that that it was pertinent for that piece to be in there. So the water was draining onto an adjacent property owner's owners what without permission. Yeah. The minutes taken at the meeting are supposed to give a true indication of the business of the meeting. Right, they're not war and peace. They may really have to be the mo the motions and you know who attends and this and that. But you did send your notes, and I did tell the select board that they could, you know, take your what you wanted and attach it to the minutes, so it would be historically in the minutes if they yeah, wanted to do the that. I was doing some work on the road to, for the water issues or something, and I haven't been doing any work on the road. Well, it was that past issue, I think, because it said, I'll read to the section. It says, Brian asked the board to make a decision on fixing the portion of Gilead Road that goes past Andrew Wright's to the height of the road past Brian's right away. Brian has done some work on the road in the past to stop the water from running down the road, but the select board ordered the water bar bars filled in. Chris clarified the board did have them filled in as Brian installed them without a permit. Chris is saying we should add there because the water was draining onto an adjacent property owners without permission. And then it says the water needs to be stopped from running down the middle of the road, which is what you said. He feels the road has been neglected and he's asking for a decision on repairs. He also wants to know when Bethel stopped getting highway aid. So, I mean, do you feel like we're really I mean, the, I, th I thought the minutes written up didn't say that Brian. I didn't think I didn't think it stated that I had done work in the past. It said that I, I'm doing. Or I, I've done work. It says has done some work in the past. Yeah. It does say in the past. Yeah, because you one. said when you wrote to me, you said you wanted an edit to the minutes. I read your edit, made sense, and I made that edit. So I don't know if you read them the second time, but so that's what it says. So yeah. I feel like. And, well, I'm just saying that the, the it would be nice if people knew that what else was going on, too, as far as the decision made. Yeah, I know. And they should have got that in the minutes when you were here that time. It, it's hard because, I mean, obviously, we always try to do a good representation of the minutes because historically, you go back and say, I need to know a decision that the select board made 10 years ago. I go back to look at those minutes. And sometimes they're really vague. It's just the motion and who was there. It doesn't really give me the history behind why a decision was made. But in regards to the select board having those filled in, those minutes pat written at that point should have been accurate. So I can't do like revisionist history. But somebody has a problem with them that this is the time to bring them up. Well, you should have brought them up. That's that's this minutes doing. now, yes, but the minutes we wrote, you know, a year ago, no. But if you are you happy with that statement? I guess I'm asking if you're happy with what we wrote. Well, I'd like, I'd like the I'd like the public, the people, to know that the town filled in the yeah. filled in the water bars and allowed the water to run down the road again. All right, we've stated why. And yeah, and I think so, I probably said that yeah. in the last round of minutes yeah. too. Also, well, plus two now your packet, everything you put is in the packet, so it's out for. Sure. 
historically and, now. And also the fact that the town is giving private people um, Brian, permission. Brian, Brian, you're trying to take over the meeting again. No, I'm not. Yes, I'm you not. are. You're I'm just talking. <laughs> It, I'm okay, do you need to stop? Isn't this an open meeting? No, meeting this meeting is the meeting of the select board. It is in a public setting. That's what you don't understand. This is our meeting, not your meeting, not his meeting, or, or those two meetings. This is a meeting of us, normally six, and it's in a public setting. So you have the opportunity, usually only under public comment, to be a part of the meeting. We, and there's a lot of other boards that don't do this, is we often have two-way conversations on all of the items. Most boards don't even do that. It's, you have public comment, that's it. it. It's basically you're watching it on a TV, so you have the opportunity. We're taking care of our meeting minutes right now. It's not your meeting minutes. You've had the opportunity to put some comments to Therese that she's put in here. We've accurately depicted what's here. The other good thing is nowadays is you can go on Orca and you can watch the whole meeting, word for word. You can play it back. How many people don't go on Orca or have Doesn't matter. It's there. It's, it's, it's a public meeting. You can go on Orca and you can get the word, word for word on what everybody says. The, the, draft meet, the meeting minutes are just kind of a higher level snapshot of what that topic was about and any you know, highlights of that. So that's, that's all we're after right now. So I made that note that you want to amend them to add that, so I did that. Is there any other amendments to the Action. meeting minutes? Make a motion they be accepted as amended. You have to second it. Second. Okay, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. And then there was a whole lot of different communications in here. Um, we had also, planning committee, we had recreational committee, there was the, um, that's one I'm missing, There's, conservation committee. Yeah. Uh, there's and a facility inspection report because we had the inspection of the wastewater treatment plant, which I told you about that we had mm -hmm. done, but we finally got the report, which is great. Amazing. I've never seen any. Yeah, that's yeah, that that interesting, interesting to read. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, and, and Richard had gone through with a fine tooth comb, wrote back to mm -hmm. Michelle Cole, or Michelle Kolb, and said, hey, we, there was a couple things here that we don't think were quite right um, that you had talked about or maybe the note was so he went back and, and wrote back to her but it says that you know our um, inspection rating was acceptable mm -hmm. so it's excellent acceptable or like failed so you know so it was good and they did were very complimentary of, of you know Tim's record keeping and so Richard was able to do stuff there was some stuff we had to go back and find a letter note later because Obviously, with Tim passing, there was some stuff we didn't know, but I thought it was a very interesting read and um, very thorough and really tells you what's there and what's going on. So, well, a lot um, of it's just documentation type stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I'd seen one years ago this, that, yeah, this that was had been done, but. Yeah. First time I had seen one. Yeah. Um, so, for, for Bethel. Considering through Richard and so Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I was, you know, really happy. Very some of the stuff, there. too, are changes, as I mentioned before, that the feds are doing, mm -hmm. that the EPA has changed some rules that the state had not implemented yet. So now, the feds said to the state of Vermont, well, if you don't implement, we're gonna start issuing your mm -hmm. permits, which nobody wants the EPA issuing the permits. So some of the things that are coming about are not a lack of anything on Richard or Tim's part, it's just changes due to the EPA. So, um, but yeah, it was an interesting read. I thought you guys would like yeah. to see it. And then we also had um, budget status report in there. So when comparing the numbers, we are 17% of the way yeah. through. And so. also, too, I did send, because I think I told you, but I sent out all the draft uh, or the existing budgets to the department heads, and I'm going to try to get some feedback and meet with those guys to see, with all of them, to see, um, you know, what they have coming down the pike for, the, for some more budget work. So I'm not sure if I'll have that in two weeks, another section, but it depends. I'd like to pin uh, Morgan and... AJ down and try to get, you know, the road crew is the biggest portion, but right now salt prices aren't out. The state hasn't issued a salt contract, so we're trying to pin down a couple things. And are they, um, I'm sure they are, but, you know, we're probably only a month away from the weather starting to take the other turn. So yeah. how are we doing with any type of winter prep maintenance, like pothole patching or yeah. any of those types of hot well, topics? Well, he's obviously got 
two people now, Morgan and AJ, but yeah, we made a deal with, so the sand is gonna get delivered, so we don't have to truck sand, which is nice. And um, so that's being taken care of. I talked to Morgan today to see if he was gonna deal with Cargill or American Rock Salt, but it looks like um, one of them, maybe American Rock Salt, isn't even gonna issue a contract. So we'll have to see. So he's working on that and they are gonna be out grading Let's see, we have rain this week, Morgan's off a day, they're going out next week to get all the roads graded, leaves blown out, graded, greater ditched, and um Because I haven't been all, over all of them, but yeah. you know, I know like traveling down Gilead Road, yeah. that mile section there has got various potholes that it need does. to be filled. And we actually talked about Gilead today, um, not the paved portion, but the... Um, the uh, we're talking about dirt portion, because I know there's a bunch of paved portion. On the dirt. Yeah. I'm not sure if what Morgan's plan is for patching. I had talked to him when Jeff was there and to see when Jeff was doing, you know, just patching the um, places where we'd place culverts to see if Morgan wanted anything. And he said, no, they were going to do it himself. So I'll have to, so I'm sure he's got it on his list because okay. he had the option to have someone do it. And he said, no, no it's just going to come quickly. You know, it is. We were talking about all the heavy rain, making sure all the culverts were open and that sort of thing and prepping for, you know, any real bad spots for mud season that they were going to, do any you know could and do, there's probably yeah. some sections on sand hill that need to get patched oh. for the oh. winter too yeah no doubt so i'm <laughs> assuming he's doing patching because we did have a conversation about it the other day so but i i have a note here to ask him about christian hill sanders well, i saw a video this weekend of um, um mount washington oh looked like uh stop. antarctica <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah so i'll ask him how when do the plants going to close What's your crystal um, ball say? Usually, usually just prior to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? That's yeah. what I thought. So anyway, Depends he, on Mother Nature. Yeah, he talked about it. So I, you know, a while ago when I asked him if he wanted Jeff to do any of the patching, and he said no, it was going to cost him too much money. Yeah. They were going to do it themselves. So obviously yeah. he's got. If I'm available, well, tell him get a hold of me. If I'm available, I'll donate my time to help patch. If okay, if he lets me know, and I'll try to clear my schedule to go out there help mm. him. You know, so he's, yeah. So Chris, one quick thing, thing uh, on Saturday, I was in, up at the uh, band shell and I talked to uh, Kirk White for a few minutes. Oh. He mentioned he wants to get on our schedule Back at on. some point in time. Yeah, he should. Get us up to date. Mm -hmm. But he said, now is the time, if there's anything that we want the legislature to take up, now's the time to get it kind of fleshed out and get it to him because Starting at, right list. after the yeah. election, people are going to start clamoring <clears throat> for this, that, and the other thing. And by the time it gets to January, they've already got a stack of bills like this, and it's too late to, to do anything. So if there's anything you know, particular that we want to move forward, um, get it to him as soon as possible, or well, certainly by election. All right. So <clears throat> they go back into session in January, right? January, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So... And he's saying by the He end was of doing week. it what quarterly with us before uh -huh. the check in? He monthly, I think. Wasn't he coming monthly? He was coming monthly, monthly was for a quarterly. while. Yeah. Monthly when they were in session. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. So he's he saying get their list before Jan. Get him on in on. October? I'll email him tomorrow. Yeah, see what the schedule looks like. When he wants to come back. But he said, you know, election is the stopper point because you don't know who's going where or what will uh -huh. change. But after that, everybody's going to start passing in all these suggestions and things. and. And uh, by the time it gets to January, it's already a done deal for the mm -hmm. What bills are going to be touched? Sounds good. So, all right, I'll make a note to email him and see when he wants to start. And then he can come back. All right. And do we have any other business to come before the board? One other thing. Can I speak? Sure. Uh, the tree issue. Did you? Yep. We asked. Um, we're going to cut the tree. I asked um, Andrew if they, since it's on their property, if we could cut it and if he wants the wood. He said, yeah. So Morgan and AJ will cut it and then, I don't know, they'll just drop it or whatever. They'll, they'll take care of it. And um, But no, they um, agreed that it needed to be cut. And I, I mentioned it to Morgan. I said, oh, by the way, I think you're going to have a tree. Yeah. Yeah, I will tell you that... Um, we're getting, you know, rain this week and Morgan is off a day, so don't park near it because it's not, um, they're not going to cut it this week. That I can tell you because AJ will be alone one day and I think, and it's supposed to pour one day, so I don't, it's not going to happen this week. So just so don't park under it. And, and it falls um, on like a weekend or 
then um, you know, there's always somebody on call. You can just call uh, the state police dispatch, and they'll they know who's on call, or else they'll get a hold of Morgan. Well, you got two choices. It's either Morgan or AJ. So one of them is on call. So, um, but it's um, you know that's that's not a problem. But I did mention it to him today. But I just want you to know, don't park your truck under it this week because it's not going to be this week. Okay. All righty. Anything else? Need a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Yep, second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep, thank you. Thank you.